the 24th chapter of the St. Luke. Let us look at the 13th verse. Today is Resurrection Day. And we cannot ignore the resurrection of Jesus. Because no matter what you believe, how you believe, Resurrection is the game changer. Because if Jesus has not risen, everything we do is in vain. What separated us from the Muslim is that Jesus came out of the grave and Muhammad is still there. What separated us from the Buddhists is that Jesus came out of the grave and their God is still there. Any religion you can think of in the world was separated us is that we are serving a risen Savior. The apex of Christ of any of our religion is resurrection. The emblem of our salvation is resurrection. The flagpole of our pride is resurrection. That is one thing that we have that others cannot boast of. We have the resurrection because Jesus rose. And nobody, nobody can boast of that same thing. So today, we want to look at the scripture in St. Luke, the 24th chapter. The 24th chapter of St. Luke. It reads, That same day, two of Jesus' followers were walking to the village of Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem. As they walk along, they were talking among about everything that had happened as they talk and discussed and discussed this thing Jesus himself suddenly came and began walking with them but God kept them from recognizing him he asked them what are you discussing so intensely as you walk along they stop short sadness written across their faces then one of them by the name of Cleopas replied you must be the only person in Jerusalem who hasn't heard about all the things that has happened there in the last few days? And then Jesus asked them, What thing? The things that happened to Jesus, the man from Nazareth, he was a prophet who did powerful miracles. And he was my, a mighty teacher in the eyes of God and all the people. But our leading priest, listen to this, our leading priest and all the religious leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and they crucified him. We had hoped we had hoped we had hoped he was the messiah who had come to rescue israel this all happened three days ago then some woman from our group of followers at his door at his tomb early this morning and they came back with an amazing report 
They say his body was missing. And they have seen angels who told him Jesus is alive. Some of our men ran out to sea. And sure enough, his body was gone. Just as the woman had said. For about two, three minutes. I want us to listen to the radio announcement or the broadcast of the flash news by NBC in Jerusalem on that day. It's three o'clock. Good afternoon. I'm Anya Carvel. In lieu of our regular news, this is a Spirit Radio special report. The death has occurred in the Roman province of Judea of Jesus of Nazareth. The popular teacher and religious leader was executed by crucifixion along with two other prisoners this afternoon on Mount Calvary in Jerusalem. The 33-year-old, also known as Jesus Christ, was arrested on Thursday evening. It's understood one of his friends, Judas Iscariot, assisted authorities with their inquiries and subsequent arrest. After cross-examination overnight by officials from different jurisdictions, Governor Pontius Pilate ordered the execution this morning. Eyewitness reports from the trial suggest the Governor's initial verdict to release the Nazarene without a charge was reversed, following representations from local religious leaders. The convicted man was forced to carry his own cross to the execution site. The crucifixion was carried out at midday and his death has been confirmed with cause of death recorded as asphyxiation brought on by scourging, crucifixion, extreme exhaustion and loss of blood. Rebecca Ryan has more. Jesus Christ, the son of Joseph, a carpenter from Galilee, was born in Bethlehem. His family moved to Egypt for an undisclosed period before settling in Nazareth. Jesus worked as a carpenter in the family business and more recently as a travelling teacher and preacher. He was known for his ability to heal physical conditions including epilepsy, blindness and paralysis. He was praised for reaching out to the lonely, poor and marginalised and for his unique insights and teaching style. Last year, a wide range of media outlets reported eyewitness accounts of a miracle where Jesus fed in excess of 5,000 people with five loaves of bread and two fish. He is also reported to have brought people back from the dead. Jesus divided public opinion by identifying himself with messianic claims in the Hebrew scriptures and angered religious leaders by claiming to be God's son, which constitutes blasphemy under Jewish law. Other scholars criticized him for claiming to have the authority to forgive sins. Jesus was in Jerusalem to celebrate the Jewish feast of Passover this week. On the night of his arrest, he held a Passover banquet with his friends, where he's reported to have foretold his death. The number of followers of Jesus' movement is not known, but is thought to be in the thousands. Most commentators believe these will disperse following the execution of their leader. Jesus is survived by his mother Mary. In lieu of flowers, the family has requested that everyone try to live as Jesus did. Donations may be sent to anyone in need. Reporting from Jerusalem for Spirit Radio, I'm Rebecca Ryan. Thank you. Meanwhile, Dites have emerged over the... Thank you. Come on, let's give the Lord a praise. If you are in Jerusalem... That will be the news that you will have listened to on the first on, on, on the first resurrection or Easter Sunday. Now, just before we go far, I want to help some people uh, the difference between Easter and resurrection. I know Easter is a name of a pagan god and but we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus I know Easter egg hunt and bunny and all that are non Christian but this is the position I take even as people condemn Christmas and say that that is a pagan holiday whatever Anything that gives you opportunity to bring the name of Jesus 
into the forefront. Do not get away from it. Because as the enemy will like it, we will not celebrate Christmas. We will not celebrate resurrection. We won't have Sunday. We won't have anything different. So don't get caught up. I have to talk to you as a church. Don't get caught up in that. But back to our message today. You are welcome at Pavilion. 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 A pavilion is an altar that is erected not inside but outside. The Lord gave us the charge to erect, to erect an altar beyond the four walls. A pavilion is an exterior altar where lives are altered. An altar is a place where lives are altered. But this altar is an altar of hope. So today I want to talk about the power, the hope of resurrection. The hope of resurrection is supposed to put on Jesus is our greatest hope. Jesus is our world greatest hope. The hope of resurrection. I want to connect to you the platform of pavilion of hope and resurrection. So that you can see that without this hope of resurrection, our salvation means nothing. So let's go and dig into how resurrection is critical to every hope that we have. Resurrection changes our life. It changes human history. It changes the way we prepare for tomorrow. Because if there was no resurrection, then there will be no reason to prepare for tomorrow. Uh, Jesus has never, if Jesus has never risen from the dead, we will have no hope. But he did. And because he did, we have hope. Our hope is in God through Jesus Christ. Our hope isn't in technology. Our hope is not in Washington. Our hope is not in Nashville. Even our hope is not in our job or our skill. But our hope is in God. Because anything with human solution will soon fade away. But our hope is in God. I come to really bring this resurrection to you, to the hopeless. And give you hope. This is where faith is and hope is you only restore what you lose. You only restore what you lose. So this is where hope is restored. You can live for 40 days without food. You can last for about three days without water. Uh, but And you can uh, last for about eight minutes without air. But you cannot last for one minute without hope. So your food is not as important as your hope. Even your water and the air you breathe is not as important as your hope. Your hope is the answer. I have always wondered why most couple, after they have been married for many years, especially 40, 50 years, once one dies, the other one doesn't last too long. I don't know whether you are witness that. It's because 
they have lost hope. The one that they have lived with for 40, 50 years is gone. And all hope has disappeared. So maybe uh, today you come here a little bit discouraged. Maybe you come here because of the urging of somebody. Uh, maybe your life hasn't gone the way you wanted it to go. Maybe you are not married to the one you want to be married to. Maybe you didn't get the job that you wanted to have. But whatever that has curtailed your hope, I come this morning to help you restore your hope. I come to help you see that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. In recent weeks, people across this nation have either lost somebody close to them or lost somebody they know about. We have for the past a year and two, three months been captive to COVID. And it looks like when some of them are even dying, we cannot go there to see them. They used to take iPad in the hospital for you to video talk to somebody that you have lived for a long time. And it looks like our life is becoming hopeless. It looks like what we have done for so many years, this thing just came and taken the breath out of us. But thank God that if vaccine can restore hope for a pandemic, just imagine what Jesus can do for a syndemic. If a pandemic can be restored through vaccine, a syndemic can be re restored through resurrection. We are going to study today about two disciples these two disciples have lost hope they have completely lost hope uh, they lost hope because they were born out they were born out because they have an expectation and that expectation seems like it is going to be lost you see they had a view that Jesus came to deliver them from the Romans tyranny. They have a view that this is going to be the Messiah that will give them physical deliverance. But to their shock, these men who are supposed to deliver them from Romans is now killed by the Romans. So they have what is called a lost hope. Uh, they couldn't tell where their train has gone off the track. So they decided to leave Jerusalem and walking away from Jerusalem into Emmaus. Uh, the Bible gave us the name, or one of the name, of these two company, or this company. One is called Cleopas. And Cleopas, and the other one was not named. But Bible study showed us that there was a Mary at the at Calvary who was one of the last people that was at Calvary and the Bible gave us a clue that that Mary was married to Cleopas. So in an assumption we can say that these two leaving Jerusalem and going away from Jerusalem because of lost hope must have been Cleopas and his wife Mary. Cleopas was going away from Jerusalem. First of all, let me deal with that. The problem we have is that when issues hit us, we go 
away from our help. Uh, my mama woke like your grandmama. Your mama don't woke like that, but my mama woke like your grandma. Because when she carried the switch, oh, you know where I'm going. And she started whooping you and talking with every lash and say, I told. Oh, somebody don't get it. Not to before I got smart. As mama is whooping and talking, I'll be running away from her but i found out that the farther i run the more i get at the end of the switch and when i got smart enough instead of running away from her i run and hold her and mama can't find a way to get the switch to me. Well, Cleopas did not know how to get his problem solved. So when he lost hope, the first thing he did is go away from Jerusalem. Going away from Jerusalem means removing yourself from the shadow of the cross. You don't want to be away from the shadow of the cross. Because it is the shadow of the cross that cascade a shadow of protection and hope for the hopeless. It is the cross that seems like it's taking away our hope, but brought hope back to us. That if Jesus come off this cross, he's coming to get us. He's coming to get us. Yeah, sit down. Yeah, sit down. We're going to peel this onion. Secondly, Jesus, the Bible says suddenly, Jesus appeared unto them on Emmaus Road. Oh, by the way, the meaning of Emmaus. The meaning of Emmaus means fountain of salvation. And some of us, while we are walking away from the cross, we don't know that we are on the fountain of salvation. Because... A fountain is a place where you get a free flow. And if it's not a fountain, then you have to do something to earn the flow. But because this is a fountain, it may us bring you a free flow. So Jesus' first appearance was to these discouraged people on the way to Emmaus. That really make me so happy or so glad to address everyone here today that Jesus decided to come to you first when you lose hope. When your hope is at a zero, Jesus will show up. When your hope is at the lowest level, Jesus will show up. He will never leave you hopeless. He said, I will come to you a broken and a contrived. God said, I will in no wise despise. He come for brokenness. He come for broken hope. As a child, we cry for broken toy. As a young adult, 
we cry for a broken bicycle. As a grown adult, we cry for a broken home. But Jesus say, I come for broken hope. When your hope is broken, Jesus will make his way unto you. Jesus was on his way to Emmaus, the way of the fountain of salvation. Instead of you planning to get out of town when you are discouraged, you need to gravitate towards Calvary because this is the place where you can have answer. I want to cu cut this message short by just giving you four points. I want to give you four points and then you can go and celebrate with your turkey or dry hand in your freezer. <laughs> Number one, hope for ordinary people. Everybody shout hope, hope. for ordinary people. It's time for a Mind Therapy Minute from Pavilion of Hope Ministries. The razor is sharp, but can't cut a tree. The axe is strong, but it cannot cut the air. The moral of the story is everyone is important according to their unique purpose. Never look down on anyone unless you are admiring their shoes. At Pavilion of Hope Ministries, our mission is to cultivate and promote the spiritual growth of all people by spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are a training ground to equip disciples with kingdom principles and revelations of the word of God. We are called to seek and save those that are lost. Please join us for worship at one of our Memphis locations. In the southeast, we have 4170 Riverdale Road and in Frazier, we have 2869 Woodlawn Terrace. Pavilion of Hope, where we create a culture of change throughout the nations that impact and empowers others to live a Christ's purpose life. Welcome to Pavilion of Hope. This is where we take ordinary people to do extraordinary things and become super. Why ordinary people? When Jesus rose, if I was Jesus, I would have shown myself first, not to ordinary people, but I would have shown myself to Caesar. I would have shown myself to the governor. Because the news media will catch that. The world will know that he is really the king. So my first appearance will be to Caesar. But Jesus did not show himself to Caesar because if he had shown himself to Caesar, Caesar's name will be a household name by now. Caesar will have got some glory that he doesn't deserve. But the only thing we think about Caesar now is a salad. He, if I was Jesus, I would have shown myself to Pilate and say, You thought I was dead? Here I am. You thought you can get me, here I am. But he didn't show himself to Pilate. Jesus showed himself, are you ready for this? First to Mary. 
not to Peter, not to John, not to James, but first to somebody shout ordinary people. Come on, shout ordinary people. Why is Mary ordinary? Mary is ordinary because in the culture that it was that they were in, women were not even recognized. And the law said the very thing you don't recognize will be the very person I show myself to. I will make a glory out of the one you don't recognize. So I come to preach to those of you who they don't recognize you on the job. I come to preach to those of you who don't give, they don't give you no blessing on your job. No recognition at home. No recognition with your friend. That Jesus said, I'm looking for you. If you're on Ima Emmaus Road, I will come for you. If you are walking down Jerusalem, I will come for you. I'm not going to the governor. I'm not going to the king. But I'm coming to nobody. And I'll make him somebody that everybody is going to be talking about. Somebody shout out somebody. Come and shout out somebody. Now sit down. Number two is hope not recognized. Welcome to the pavilion of hope. I don't want you to be too familiar with the pavilion of hope that you fail to recognize that this is the place where faith and how many believe God is going to restore their hope today hope not recognize just imagine that Cleopas and Mary were called by Dr. Luke as disciples of Jesus disciples of Jesus and these disciples of Jesus Jesus joined them on the road to Emmaus and they were talking to Jesus and did not recognize have you been talking to hope and you didn't recognize have you been dealing with hope and you never recognized have you been in the environment of hope? Oh, no, 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 no. Could hope be sitting to your right hand? Could hope be sitting to your left hand? Did you wake up with hope in your house this morning? And you never recognize that which you, that which you call common. The one that you didn't give, no. No recognition of was the very hope that God has sent to you. Could you be underestimating a gift from God that is right next to you and you never take advantage of it? Jesus was walking with them. Jesus was talking with, with them. The hope they needed was right with them. Come and tell your neighbor, look at your hope and recognize your hope. Come and shall recognize your hope. It's closer than you think. Come and shall recognize your hope. It's nearer than you think. Come and shall your hope is here. Because the songwriter say, my hope is nothing else. My hope is not in anybody. My hope is not in any place other than Jesus Christ. The gospel 
according to St. Mark. He put it this way. He says, after that, afterwards, Jesus appeared in a different form to two of them while they were walking in the country. Jesus appeared in different form. Jesus appeared in different form. The form may be the face you see every day. Jesus decided to appear in a different form. Have you been missing your blessing? Because you fail to recognize the form. Have you lost your answer? Because you fail to embrace your form. Some of us don't like some people that Jesus can crawl in and appear to you. Because he knows the one that you like and the one that you don't like. But it may be the one that you don't like that Jesus came in the form of what you don't like. Be careful in your choice because you don't know which form is coming to you. He may come in the form of somebody that doesn't look like he's ready. And God has treasure in trashy places. God has treasure in trashy places. Yours may be locked up in a dumpster. He is with us all the time. He is with us all the time. I'm going through number three. Number three. Oh Lord. All right, number three. Give me number three. Hope when you are lost. Everybody shout hope when you are lost. Satan's objective. Thank you, baby. Satan's objective is to always get you further from the cross. They should have stayed in Jerusalem, but Satan's objective is to get you further from the cross. But Holy Spirit's objective is to bring you closer to the cross. Uh, the Apostle Paul, in his writing, uh, in, into the churches, he says, since we have been justified through faith, we now have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through Him who have gained access by faith into the grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Paul said, Our joy is in the hope of the glory. Of God. What is the glory of God? The glory of God, Paul put it to, to us in Romans the fifth chapter, is that Jesus rose again. That is the glory of God. And we rejoice in the glory of God. Number four, hope found in the scripture. And this and this is where we ended. Hope found in the scripture hope found in the scripture although these guys were going in the wrong direction although they were going away from the cross in the 17th verse uh, give me the 17th verse uh, give me the 17th verse if you can, can find it in the 17th verse Okay, in the 17th verse, 
He asked them, What are you discussing so intensely? Hope lost. The, what, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still and their face confused because their hope was lost. What are you discussing so intensely? They stood still and they have a blind face on. When they have their blind face on, it's telling that they are completely lost. I wonder when they answer Jesus in the 18th verse that don't you know what has happened uh, three days ago? I wonder what Jesus was thinking. Because Jesus was thinking three days, three days, don't that three days ring a bell to you? Cleopatra, don't you know that I have been talking about three days for a long time? Don't you know there's something about three days that means something to me? And Jesus look at them and say, you are so lost that you did not even remember what I have been telling you. So Jesus went on further. And the Bible says that in the uh, 27 verse, give me 27 verse. He said to them, how foolish were you and how slow of heart to believe, believe all that the prophet has spoken. Did not Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And are you ready? Begin with Moses. And begin with Moses and all the prophets. He explained to them what was said in all the scriptures hope in the scripture he explained to them what was said in all the scripture concerning him three days you didn't remember that i have talked to you about three days so now let me bring hope back to you in the scripture how did he bring hope back to them in the scripture he said let me take you back to genesis because in the book of genesis when you read about the seed of the woman that was me in the book of exodus when you read about the Pass passover lamb that was me in the book of Leviticus, when you read about the high priest, that was me in the book of Numbers, when you read about the cloud by night, uh, the cloud by day, and fire by night, somebody shout, that was me in the book of Deuteronomy, when you read about Moses and the law, that was me in the book of Joshua when you read about the captain of salvation that was me in the book of Judges when you read about the judge and the Lord giver that was me in the book of Ruth when you read about the Kingsman Redeemer that was me in the book of the first and second Samuel, when you read about the prophets, that was me. Somebody shout, that was me. I'm giving you hope because I'm King's Redeemer. I'm giving you hope because I'm gi giving you hope because I'm the reigning king. I'm giving you hope in the book of Ezra. 
I was the faithful scribe in the book of Nehemiah. I was the rebuilder of the broken wall in the book of Esther. I was the savior for the helpless in Job. I was the sovereign God over human pain in, in Psalm. I was the good shepherd in Proverbs. I was the wisdom. Somebody shall yeah. Shall yeah. In Ecclesiastics, I was the morning life. I was the morning star. In the songs of Solomon, I was the lover of your soul. Shall yeah. Shall yeah. Because of resurrection, because of hope, I was the rejected messenger in Jeremiah. I was the weeping prophet in lamentation. Shout glory! Shout glory! Shout glory! I was the wheel. In the middle of the wheel, in Ezekiel, shout yes! I was the fourth man in the fiery furnace, in the lion's den. I was the fourth man, shout glory! Hallelujah! I have hope because I saw him in the scripture. I have hope because his word said it. I have hope because he defined himself. I have hope. Somebody shout, I have hope in resurrection. In the book of Hosea, I was the faithful husband whose wife jilted him. In the book of Joel, I was the spirit and the fire. Shall ye? In the book of Amos, I was the burning bearer. In the book of Obadiah, I was the mighty savior. Shall ye? Hallelujah! 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 In Zephaniah, I was the restorer. In Habakkuk, I was the great evangelist. Shayat! Hallelujah! Hallelujah, hallelujah. He was the messenger with the beautiful feet. In the new, in Malachi, he was the son of righteousness. He told us in the, mad, in the book of Matthew that he was the savior, the savior king in Matthews. In Mark, he was the servant. He was the savior in Matthew. He was the servant in Mark. He was the son of man in Mark. And the son of God in John. He showed himself and gave hope through the scripture. Stand to your feet. Because after... After we got through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, when he got to the book of Acts, he showed himself as the risen Savior. The risen Savior. The one that was dead and now is alive and he lives forevermore. Thank you for watching. I'm sure you were richly blessed by this message. 
For more life-changing messages from Bishop Wesley Arije, visit us on social media. To know more about Pavilion of Hope, please visit our website at www.pavilionofhope.net or join us as a special guest for our transformation service every Sunday at any of our locations closest to you. Pavilion of Hope, where faith is renewed and hope is restored.